Hello everyone and welcome back to Destiny. It is that time again. We have the expansion safely nestled on our platform of choice, waiting for that light switch from Bungie to turn it on so we can enjoy all of that awesome juicy content. And Black Armory from the looks of it seems to be shaping up pretty nicely. Now there's been a lot of discussion online about what exactly you're getting in Season 5, why do we have to pay for an annual pass, what's going on here. So in this video I do want to clear up what's going on with Season 5, what's going on with the annual pass, and that you can get a better sense of what exactly you're investing in, what you're missing out on, what you're not missing out on, and the fact that there's more content that you might realize for those of you who only own the base game. On top of that, we got some great new details about the raid coming in Black Armory, and of course we're going to be breaking that down a little bit more. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so let's dive right into the seasonal updates that are coming in Season 5. Season 5 has already begun as of this week. We have new pinnacle weapons to chase, which is pretty awesome. Ranks have been reset. But on top of that, so you get a better sense of what's coming in the season, let's take a look at this graphic. I'm going to leave it up on the screen for a little bit, just so you can kind of get a sense. I think this is a really good job of illustrating what is going to be free, what is going to be paid, what you have to own for what. The thing I want to point out, which is actually pretty incredible, is the items under free seasonal updates that have just the simple D2 dog tag in the upper right hand corner. What that is signifying to you is that this is going to be content that is free for anyone who has at least just the base version of Destiny 2. Yes, that does include the free version that you got on PlayStation Plus or the version that you got through Battle.net. If you own those versions, just the base copy of Destiny 2, you get all of these items as free seasonal updates throughout the year. So, looking at December through February with the Season of the Forge, that includes the Dawning Event, new Triumphs and Lore Books, new Vanity Rewards, new Rank Rewards, Iron Banner, and of course Crimson Days coming in February. That extends to the Spring Event and the Summer Event, which we now know is another Solstice of Heroes, which is pretty cool. Now, moving on from that, if you do happen to own Forsaken, if you spent the $40 on Forsaken, this is what you're going to be getting. That has a little yellow Forsaken icon in the upper right hand corner. We have the first thing right off the bat, which is pretty incredible, which is the power increase. The power is being increased to 650 inside of Season of the Forge, and every person that has Forsaken is going to be able to achieve 650. You don't have to have the annual pass for this. I think this is a fantastic and brilliant move, much overdue move by Bungie, because this was a huge point of contention in year one. This effectively split up the community pretty harshly inside of year one, where the power increases meant that you couldn't join your fellow friends in certain activities, and that was just no fun for anybody. But now the power increases is across the board for all owners of Forsaken, so everybody's going to be able to get to 650. And the Vidoc did confirm that we're getting 50 power every single season, so in Season of the Drifter, it's going to be up to 700, and then Season of the Redacted is going to be 750. And then the only other thing that's Forsaken exclusive, aside from that, is simply Gambit private matches and new maps because, well, you have to have Forsaken to play Gambit in the first place. So, of course, this is going to be exclusive to Forsaken owners. So, I'm pretty happy with the free seasonal updates. And I think if there's any doubt in anyone's mind as far as what you're getting out of your $40, this kind of paints that picture for you, which is pretty cool. So let's move on to actually talking about the annual pass and the content that you're getting for that $30 to $35 that you spent on it or that you're thinking of spending on it. So what does it actually get you? Well, Bungie put it best in their Vidoc, and they mentioned that it was sort of like an additional layer of endgame pursuits and activities that aren't required for your enjoyment of Forsaken, but they just add additional layers in case you are a hobbyist player and you're super excited for additional Destiny content, as a lot of us probably are. But of course, to be excited for content is one thing, to be charged a certain amount is another, so let's break it down a little bit more. So if you think about it, Season of the Forge or Black Armory more specifically is going to cost you about 10 to $12 worth of that annual pass. So what are you getting for that 10 to $12 in this expansion? 
Well, first off, you're getting the Forge. And of course, if you've been following the news this week, you kind of know a little bit about what the Forge is. In case you didn't, it is sort of a horde mode based activity. It is match made with three players. And the combat is very similar to Escalation Protocol as far as pacing and chaoticness, where you can go in, fend off waves of enemies, and build your own weapon using components and various other items that we don't really know too much about yet but it sounds pretty cool and there is an entire sort of foundry of weapons that is called the black armory set that we're going to have access to and of course that comes with a set of armor as well so very similar to escalation protocol as far as that setup and the acquisition of the weapons but of course we're going to have a lot more of the arsenal to chase but the other major thing that we're getting inside of Black Armory is the new raid, dropping only three days after the launch of the expansion. Now, before, we thought this was going to be a raid layer, so we were pretty much getting ready for something about the size of maybe Eater of Worlds or maybe Spire of Stars. But it looks like they actually managed to make this raid maybe a little bit longer, or at least long enough to where they can comfortably drop the word layer from the title of what it is. So as we learned in yesterday's This Week at Bungie, the raid is called Scourge of the Past, and it fits somewhere in between Crota's End and Last Wish in size. Now, of course, that is the shortest raid and the longest raid, so it could really fit anywhere in between there. So we don't really know where it falls in that spectrum. My guess is that it's going to be somewhere around the size of Wrath of the Machine, which would be, I think, perfect for something that comes out in a smaller expansion like this. Now... What I can only hope is that it has its own set of weapons and armor, especially since this is a raid and not a raid lair, despite what some of the in-game text still says. Bungie, get on that, please fix it. You're confusing your audience. But anyways, that raid is being released at 9 a.m. December 7th, like I mentioned before, and the recommended power is 640, but the interesting thing there is that there is no minimum power requirement, and they say that any guardian who owns the annual pass can drop into the space and explore. Interesting. So they did mention in the Vidoc that this is going to feel very different from the typical raid in the fact that there are things like sparrows that you can ride around with. So I wonder if it's going to be a little bit more explorable than your typical raid. But of course, I don't want to get down too hard into speculations here. Anyways, let me know in the comments below what you think of this year in content. It's looking pretty good to me. Of course, a lot of it has yet to be proven. We haven't played Black Armor yet. That's just a few short days away. And of course, we'll hopefully have a much better idea after we get our hands on it. If you enjoyed this video, a like is much appreciated. And be sure to subscribe to NerdOn for much more gaming content, including these weekly Destiny updates. Thanks for watching, happy gaming, and I will see you all next time.